everyone good morning such a beautiful day it is the christmas eve and uh, i'm joining from canada and here it is such a um you know celebration but we all know that this is the celebration for all of us as well um as christmas you know um signifies um that tree that you know all the souls or human family tree uh, where baba is on the top so it's really celebrated as a nice holiday season here so we are happy for having the holiday season right so that we can make more effort on ourselves so let's listen to today's murli that we want to revise so as you can all see the title today is the means to overcome adverse situations is your original stage so it is you know baba is giving us the means and that is our original stage when we are stable in our original stage we can overcome all adverse situations and definitely the very first one or that is what we should always experience is the avyakt stage so the murli was spoken on 11th of march 2000 sorry 1971 so baba is starting with a question seeing a question that has the practice of being in the avyakt stage whilst being in the corporeal form become easy so has it become easy for us so give me a second sorry about that i'll remove i'll bring out the murli again so let's think about it baba is asking has it become easy that you know while doing everything in the corporeal body do we experience the object stage that easily or not so 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 baba is asking the question that has the practice of being in the object stage whilst being in the corporeal become easy you have come to your home to this bhatti to increase the practice of being able to stabilize your self ever you wish so it is baba is um, addressing to those who have gone to madhuban home to for a bhatti uh, for the practice so for what to increase the practice of being able to stabilize your your intellect whenever you wish and wherever you wish and where baba is bringing our attention to the object stage so now you have to try to make the practice of a short time here permanent so for a short time during the bhatti in madhuban as you will practice it as you will experience it that short time should become permanent or long term just as you consider yourself to be abhyakt angels whilst walking and moving around when you come to the bhatti or in madhuban in the same way you should keep this practice with you on the field of action or whilst at your service station so in madhuban whoever or all of us have gone we experience it very easily and what is that being abhyakt angels and baba is asking us to be that while in home or wherever you are you are in your service station wherever you happen to be 
you can remember an experience you have had once anywhere. So what we can experience in Madhuban, once you have experienced something, it's easy to experience that again. So by remembering the experiences you have had here in Madhuban, and by stabilizing yourself in the same stage you have had here, the intellect will develop that habit. Baba wants us to develop that habit of what? Experiencing the self as the abhyak angels while in this corporeal body. Just as in logic life also, a habit pulls you towards itself against your conscious wish. In the same way, after you have developed the habit of stabilizing yourself in the abhyak stage, this habit will automatically pull you towards itself. So Baba is giving the yukti. What is that we have to practice? Becoming a Vyak angel. So, um, I don't know, we can ask ourselves that, is it our habit? Is it our practice? Do we see ourselves as Abhyak angels or we are so much caught up in the situation of my role, the corporeal form, whatever is happening to my role, that is the drama, that is the play, that is the, according to karmic accounts and everything. But the, the angel, object, the angel or soul is separate. Do you see that separate the form of your son? Is it a habit? Baba is saying when there is a logic habit, how it pulls automatically towards that habit. So it should be that kind of habit that... Um, you should feel to, you know, that habit of experiencing the self as an avyak angel. Baba is saying there are some souls who even whilst making such effort, while making effort here now for transforming the self from corporeal to avyak to soul consciousness, right? While making this effort, they say, this is my habit. So why do you have this weakness? Why did you become angry? Why do, did you become so sensitive? So we cannot be this, right? We are making our effort to become soul conscious. Angels, they are not angry. They, are not, they don't have weaknesses. They cannot be sensitive. They only create the positive things. So Baba says that when, you know, we sometimes do that and we ask, Baba is saying, some souls, they say, this is my habit. So they will say, it is my habit. Even now, some children give this reply. So in the same way, if you create this state or develop the habit of this practice, then the habit of this avyak stage will pull you towards itself against your conscious wish. Are we not wanting that? That, that should be the habit that should become so natural and pull us Against our conscious wish means you lose the interest to stay in that trivial things or the situations. So Baba, I think if you create this stage of, of the or develop the habit of this practice, then the habit of this object stage will pull you towards itself against your conscious wish. This habit will save you from going to court. So this is, again, we can expand further. So what, what Baba is talking about? Baba talks about last minute when we are returning home, when the confluence age ends, we meet with the Dharam Raj, the Supreme Judge, right? Baba will tell us the verdict of how much weaknesses remained, how many accounts remained unsettled, you know, how much impurity remained in me. And so, accordingly, where will I take birth in the golden age? That's a goal. But says that will come as a such a heightened repentance. It will be a big punishment at the end. So Baba is saying that if you develop this habit of staying in the object stage, you know, we need to pull ourselves out of the situation 
that's happening to my role. Remember that and stay being the child of God, the Vyakta angel. That will save us in the last minute from going to the court. That means what? No repentance, no punishment. You have owned all your virtues by your own effort. You go home with Baba and you come to golden age at the beginning. So Baba is saying, do you understand? Since you are able to adopt bad habits, are you not able to instill this good habit? When you have done something in a practical way, two to four times, by putting that into a practical form, you develop that practice. Just two to four times, we have to give our determined attention. So you put this practice into a practical form in this bhatti, in Madhuban, do you not? Since you put it into a practical form here and you develop that practice, then what should something that you have practiced become? It should become natural and part of your nature. So when something becomes a deep practice habit, then that becomes our natural, natural habit that becomes. And would you like, would we not love to say that my nature is, you know, that of an avyakta angel? So Baba is wanting us to develop that practice and make it a part of our nature. Do you understand? You say, this is my nature. So the more you practice it, the more this practice should become natural and part of your nature. What will happen when this stage becomes your nature? Something new, Baba's gonna speak today. Mm. New means we know, so maybe we can just turn on it. What will happen when this stage becomes your nature? Baba says the natural calamities will come. This has not yet become your nature and this is why the natural calamities are waiting. So when a the stage, full consciousness becomes our natural nature, natural calamities will come because that will be the time of end of the confluence age, the destruction of the world of the Iron Age so that the golden age can begin. So Baba is saying, you know, you're not invoking that last minute. The natural calamities will actually bring that um, biggest form of destruction at the end because the object stage is not, has not become a natural nature. So that's not, we have not become it yet. We haven't like, you know, uh, uh, reached there yet. Um, so the natural calamities are waiting. Because if those who are opposing are not able to overcome those situations with their own stage, then how will those situations come about? So we are not ready, Baba is saying. And for that, Baba is bringing attention to those who oppose. Oppose what? Oppose situations. When situations come, do we take sorrow, cry, complain? You know, do we? That is opposing the situation. Do we ask, why is it happening to me? Why that person is like that? Where is our attention? Baba is saying, because if those who are still complaining or opposing when situations come, how will they, you know, if they're opposing, they will not be able to overcome those situations with their own stage. It means their stage is still in complaining stage. So when it would be that abhyakta, angel stage when this knowledge practically stays in us and we take the situation as you know gift welcome where they can come so that we can settle our accounts right when our stage is that then the situations will come so that we can conquer we can overcome because our stage is not there the situations are also not coming or, or even if it is coming then we are not able to overcome. We increase our account of that. Baba says, those who are to oppose are not yet ready. And this is why it is taking long for the curtain to be opened. 
So when we'll be ready in every way, right? The curtain will be open. Somewhere I we all know that the last minute is fixed. And yet it depends or we for that many children, the stage be ready so that the cycle can turn. Baba says, even now, you have not yet developed this interest in the old habits, old sanskars, old things, the old world, the old bodily relations. Have we developed this interest? Or still they, you know, how do we know that we have this interest or not? Because then we take pleasure from all that. We enjoy it somewhere deep inside. Do we? We have to take pleasure from Baba, Baba's connection, the truth, and knowing, knowing where we are in the cycle, and always being aware and alert. Baba says, even now, you have not yet developed disinterest, old habits, old sanskars, old things, old world, and old bodily relations. Whenever you have to go somewhere, you have to turn your back on the things that you have to leave behind. Do you not know how to turn your back on something? Firstly, you do not turn your back on anything. And secondly, you do not follow up any. Actually, I think it is instructions you receive. Or you don't follow the instruments who are in front. But mostly Baba is saying, as I could understand that maybe some misprint here, that first, don't you don't turn your back on anything. Like you know, you have to leave this world, but you are still facing them. You know, your face is towards them. You're enjoying them. You are not turning your back on them. And secondly, you don't follow up or follow any instructions that are we receiving. Baba is giving us instructions in every murli, and we don't follow instruments, right? So you have seen the, again, toy or story of Sita and Rama, have you not? What does Sita do to Ravan? She turns her back on him, not? If you turn your back on him, you will easily be saved from being attracted to him or by him. Both has very deep meaning. If I have turned back on somebody, even they will lose the interest or attraction to me. Baba says, if you turn your back on Ravan, you will easily be saved from being attracted by him, by the vices, by my old sanskars, by the weaknesses. <clears throat> but you do not turn your back on him. When you come close to the cemetery, the face of the corpse is turned towards the cemetery and the feet in the opposite direction. So you do not know how to turn your back on something either. You then turn your face in that direction from where actually you have to turn your face away. You then turn your face in that direction and this is why you become trapped by one attraction or another. That is attraction and um, is Maya that you know our face is towards it and it pulls it us towards it, and then our face is away from Baba. So how will we get attracted to Baba? That is the habit. More and more and more to make it our nature. Baba saying, so you do not know how to turn your back on something or to follow something like the instruction follow instruments. Maya creates many forms in order to attract you. And so instead of turning your back on her, you become attracted by her. When you become attracted, you forget your effort. You forget to move forward and you come to a standstill. So what will happen? You will take a long time to reach your destination. This is the bhatti of the Kumars. But then Baba brings the attention that this particular bhatti is for Kumars, but well, is for us. They're all Kumars, Kumaris, they're Baba's children making effort. And Baba is saying, if you, you know, get attracted, if you keep your face towards all the vices, the Ravan, then 
you know, you will forget your what you have to make. You may start to again enjoy that. And Baba says that you'll come to a standstill. And what will happen? You'll take a long time to reach your destination. And can the time wait for us? We'll lose it at the last minute. We may repent that I had so much time, but I did not make my effort. So Baba talks about Kumars. This is the bhatti of the Kumars, is it not? Um, so Kumar should keep this um, story or the toy of Ram, Sita, Ravan in front of, in front of them. You turn your face towards Maya. When you turn your face towards Maya, you are not able to face the situations that come to you from Maya. If you do not turn your face towards her, you will be able to face the situations created by Maya. Do you understand? You have to turn your face away in order to get that power to face the situations, to overcome, connect with Baba. Do you know what is the memorial of the Kumars remaining pure and Satoguni? Sant Kumar is the example, the Kumar who always remained young. It's a, a story in the scripture, but it's the symbolic um, symbol of who? Kumars who remain pure and Satoguni. Satoguni means filled with that highest elevated virtues. What is their speciality? They are always shown as young Kumars. It is said that they always have an age of five years. This is the praise of purity, just as five years old children remain completely pure. So we know five years old children are so pure, so innocent. They stay away from the attractions of relationships. No matter how big their local family may be, their stage is always that of a small, pure child. In the same way, this is the memorial of purity. A kumar means a pure stage. In that too, a gathering has been portrayed, not just one kumar. As an example, only a few would be shown. So this gathering of yours is a memorial of purity, gathering of kumars, gathering of all of us. There should be such purity where there is no thought or experience of impurity. Before you go, you have to create your stage as is shown in your memorial. When you become detached from the things of this world and the relations of this world, you will be loved by the divine family, Bab Dada and the entire world. Only when we become detached, we naturally are loved by others because detached shows power, positivity in you. Everybody loves. Generally, when you become separated from your relatives, or if you become separated in a logic way also, then by being separated, you are loved more. If you stay with them, or if you have attachment in that relationship, then you are not loved that much. We know that, we feel it, right? We miss the person who is away. And if there is attachment, there is clinginess, then we are not loved that much that is a logic situation but here you have to be detached with knowledge you must not simply be detached externally there should be no attachment of the mind either the more detached you become you will definitely be that much loved the moment you become detached from your body and this stage of being detached is loved by the self also we, we love it right when we feel that detachment, we struggle to reach to that stage maybe, but we love it. Have you ever had this experience of being detached from your body, from your role? You know, experiencing totally as Baba's child? When you have attachment to your body, when you cannot become detached, you do not love yourself and you yourself feel distressed. So that is the inner conflict that makes us distressed. Think about that. Because you are entangled somewhere. You want to be free. Freedom is our original sanskar. So we love it. And when we cannot become detached, we ourselves feel distressed. In the same way, 
if you do not become detached from external attachment, then instead of being loved, you become distressed. All of you must have had this experience. It is just that you are not able to have such experiences all the time. Is there anyone here who has not experienced this loving and detached stage? That's for us checking. You call yourselves yogis, do you not? Since you call yourselves easy Raja yogis, it is not possible that you have not had this experience. Otherwise, you cannot give yourselves this title. We are easy Raja yogis. We have definitely experienced the detached and loving stage. Just that we are not able to have that for a longer period of time or a lot of time. A yogi means one who has these qualities and this is why he is a yogi. Otherwise, you cannot stay, cannot say in your introduction that you are students of Easy Raja Yoga. You are students, are you not? You are? Yes. It is not possible that students would not have the experience of their study. Yes. It is certain that there can be the difference in the extent to which you are able to make this experience permanent. However, those who are old students should not only have a temporary experience of this even now. If even now you have this experience temporarily, what will happen? You will only receive the inheritance of the conference age and the future inheritance for a temporary period. So detached and loving, abhyakta stage, soul conscious stage, not temporary, but for a long period of time. Do you understand? You will not be able to claim the full inheritance that you should. We have right to the full inheritance, but we cannot you will only claim it for a temporary period. So are you content with just this much? Today is the beginning of the bhatti of the Kumars. Beginning of the bhatti means the beginning of becoming strong. Some will sacrifice themselves, others will become strong, and others will have a determined thought for purity. This is why you have come here, is it not? Now see that you do what you say. This group has to become innocent of Maya and become saints with knowledge. Like the little children, five years old. Innocent of Maya and become saints with knowledge. When the golden age souls come here, they are innocent of the knowledge of vice. Do you remember what you souls were when you were in Satyuk? You were innocent of the knowledge of Maya. Do you remember that? Are you able to make those sanskars emerge into your consciousness? Or are you just able to understand about it because you have heard about it? So think about how deep practice of meditation yoga we can do, where we can tap onto our subconscious and how we were in the golden age, not just because Baba is saying in the Murali. Just as the things you have done in your childhood of this birth are clearly in your consciousness, in the same way, are your sanskars of yesterday clearly in your consciousness in the form of sanskars in your life today? Like golden age sanskars, you remember like your childhood. Or do you have to bring them into your consciousness? Those who think that their golden age sanskars are clearly in their consciousness, just as the sanskars of the childhood of this life are clearly in their consciousness, raise your hand. We have to ask it and maybe make ourselves eligible to raise our hands. So do we remember, do we remember how we were in the golden age? It should be clearly in your consciousness. They were clearly in the consciousness of the Sakar form. You will only be able to have this consciousness when you have the consciousness of the form of the soul clearly and all the time. At present, the consciousness of the form of the soul is sometimes hidden behind the curtain of the body. This is why this consciousness is also visible 
from behind the curtain, but it is not clear. When you have the consciousness of the soul clearly and for a long time, you will be able to see your future inheritance, that is, your future sanskars will emerge in front of you. We have shown in your pictures. On the one side, you have shown the vices running away. And on the other side, the consciousness of the intellect running towards Baba and the future attainment. So this is the picture we have to put in our consciousness. Vices are running away and our consciousness of the intellect is running towards Baba and the future attainment. Picture of Lakshmi Narayan has been shown. Have you created this picture for others or for your own stage? So in order to bring your future sanskars into your consciousness clearly, you must constantly and clearly have the consciousness of the form of your soul. Just as you are clearly able to see your body, in the same way, you should clearly be able to see the form of your soul. That is, you should be able to experience it. What do the Kumars now have to do? You must become a saint and also be innocent. This is an easy study, is it not? Your course will be completed in two words, innocent and saint. You must apply this stamp before you go. You must be completely innocent of weaknesses and disturbances. Even the word weakness should be completely finished. The name of this group is the group that stays within simplicity and purity. That which is simple is beautiful. You must not just have simplicity of your costume, but simplicity in everything. To be egoless means to be simple. To be egoless means to be simple. To be free from anger means to be simple. To be free from greed means to be simple. This simplicity is the method for purity. Acha, what slogan will you remember? Whatever you say, you will first do it to others and then you will speak about it. You will not first speak about it, but you will first do it and show others and then speak about it. So you must remember this slogan. This is where this morally ends. So Baba gave us the definition of simplicity and what the two words we are becoming. Innocent of all the vices, weaknesses and saint. That is real purity. And Baba is asking us to be able to see our souls as clearly as we see the body. And soul and body are two different entities. Do we see it? How much you flow with the soul's emotions or your body's emotions, the role's emotions? I think this is a question we all can take home and churn that how much do you see your soul? Do you see it as clearly as the body? So Om Shanti, thank you everyone. We can take one minute silence and then we can share our points. Thank you. If we are ready to just bring up some of the thoughts or what stayed with you from today's Murli. Anyone who would like to share? So is it all clear to us? Yes, Om, you can go ahead. Non mute and speak.
Can everybody unmute back again? Omba, you can unmute yourself now. Oh, I think they are not. Om Shanti. Yeah, yeah, there was some, uh, I was not able to unmute. Om Shanti uh, is a beautiful movie that uh, basically focuses on the, my, on the original stage, that is eternal stage, uh, point form and soul consciousness stage. So uh, in order to bring my future DT sanskars into my day-to-day -day, uh, life, uh, I need to focus on my consciousness clearly and constantly and clearly have the consciousness of the form of my soul. And that's what, uh, and uh, keep checking myself and experience the soul consciousness stage. This I really like. And second is about the simplicity how simplicity is the method for purity to be simple in uh, uh, not only the costume but also in everything be egoless uh, be free from anger and uh, greed so need to this mudli reminds me to keep checking myself whether i am simple and divine and pure om shanti thank you brother that's beautiful yeah om shanti sister yes om shanti so now Baba after the mothers now has taken the next book, people. Mm -hmm. Kumar, the vibrant pulse, his guru, by, I think it's such a beautiful thing. And the vibrant thing which I like over here is that don't turn back. You know, when, when you just read that, don't turn back, don't turn back. And I don't know whether it's right to share. I just thought about that song which used to hit us those days, Mud Mud Ke Na Dek. Though the context was different, but that one thing took me that I should not look back. I should not look back. I should move forward because uh, the destination is there. That was one example. And the second example, when in a race we go, they always say, don't look back. If you look back, you'll stop. You'll stagnate. Mm -hmm. And then you'll see your partner and then you'll fail. I think these two examples in Lokik, which I have seen, really made it. But here Baba says, don't turn, because if you turn back on the things you left, you'll be trapped. Something, there may be some very nice things of the past which got attracted to you. She say, hey, let me go and taste that again. Let me see that again. So Baba says, you should not have that. That's why don't turn. Get that vairagya, no more old habits. No more old samskars. Because if you're going to go behind and all of you are behind, when do I open the curtain? So this one thing which this move forward uh, the, is there, I like it. But sometimes they say, learn from the past, but don't dwell on it. Because you now is the time for you, new memories, new samskars, a new world. I don't know, this one aspect, uh, maybe as a youth have... Uh, as I used to study Vivekananda and all, Aveka Rais and all, it really, the, and the way Baba has put it, why for the youth, I think it will put them on a good foot today. Yeah. Thank you. Beautiful sharing. Thank you, Sister Girija. Yeah, the only way is to move forward. And definitely, like you said, you may take some learning from the past so that you don't repeat it, but not dwell or don't stay there. And yes, if we turn back, we'll be stagnant. We'll, our progress will stop. Our movement will stop. Um, beautiful. Thank you. Om Shanti Ji, Divine Family. Om Shanti Balvinder Sister. Um, two points for clarification. Number one, uh, as I'm learning how to experience soul conscious days, while closed eyes in meditation, I am at that stage, I'm learning. So it is, it is very difficult for me to be in that stage while playing my different role uh, during day activity. So I cannot do it with open eyes during day. And I am telling my lovely mind, mind, you are on right track. You just need a little bit more patience. Don't worry, you will be, you are getting there. So mm -hmm. am I correct? That's very good that you're telling your mind the right thing. Definitely. Keep telling okay. that. Keep moving. 
but um, Raja Yoga, we do with open eyes. I was talking in Sakar Murli too, I think one or two days before. So that is exactly why Baba says it is an open eye meditation so that it's a practical thing. While you do your work while fulfilling all your responsibilities through your body with open eyes, your heart, your mind will remember Baba. So meditation, this Raja Yoga, you have to practice with open eye while doing at home at your own free time. That is where is the practice with open eye so that that becomes a practice that during the day with open eyes, you can experience the same connection with Baba. If you didn't know that, so you have to turn on that sister. Yeah, I, yeah, I will do that. But as I'm learning, so I spoke to Baba and Baba said, while you are in the beginning stages, that's okay. But moving forward, you need to switch to open eye meditation, not closed one. Got it. Yeah. So you know it. So that's your aim. And definitely Baba will help. So keep on yeah. doing it. Yeah, I will get there. My second point for clarification is, um, first question came to my mind, when conference is, will end? Then immediately I learned from somebody, it will, it's almost 100 years old. And it's going to end with, within next 14, 15 years. That's what I heard when world cycle will turn from Murli. So just example for you. If today I'm 90 year old and I understood completely Baba's message that in one second, you can get uh, liberation in life. Then I do not need to wait for that timing at all. I have already begun my lifestyle, life journey, living in golden age. For example, I took 21 days challenge last week. I sleep with Baba in a golden night in his lap, heart, in his, uh, 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 in his remembrance. And I wake up in golden morning and I live in golden day right from last week. Am I correct? Very good, beautiful, of course. You have to practice it. And uh, there's no question of waiting. It is not you alone. You will be Baba's helper for others. But well, if you really reach to your destination of reaching there, you really completed fully, you are pure 100%, then you leave your body. As you know, that is the expansion. We know about this knowledge. And you will stay in the subtle world. Um, like Brahma Baba. So we are in the body until we finish all that is weak, negative, and all accounts um, that is still remained. So keep on doing this practice. It is until the last minute. You don't have to wait, but you will be there. It will be naturally happen that when you are ready, you will be ready. Just keep doing the work. You will take care okay. of the family for others, right? Okay, thank you. So I am on right track. Just two points for clarification. Right. Thank, you. thank you. Sister, I just would like to, yesterday's I think Sakar Murli Baba just mentioned about this open-eyed meditation. What are you going to eat flies if you're going to close your eye? When you eat food, you open your eyes and eat. If you close your eyes, you will start eating flies. Makhi <laughs> khana so I was just thinking about that because even as Belvinder, in the earlier stages, I asked Jainty Ben this question. Is it necessary that I should close my eye, that I should open my eyes? I feel lovely when I close my eyes because I had that previous experience. He said, when you're walking and all, are you going to, when you want to think of Baba, you're saying you want to think of Baba always, are you going to cl uh, close your eyes and walk? So practice that because that gives you the real Raj Yoga meditation. I just thought to share from Shanti. Thank you. Thank you. Om Shanti. Uh, this uh, I, which uh, I think uh, we are just adding some reflection on this uh, uh, in a subtle manner. This uh, it could also be the third eye that uh, the third eye should always be open. I mean, uh, yes, uh, in the gross form, the both eyes are open, then definitely I will be uh, uh, that that uh, the fly the fly example. But the fly could also be the Maya that uh, the 
the maya we should not enter when we are remembering baba so in the third eye that i am a soul i am in the you know the point form formless uh, stage eternal stage then the maya will not enter i am in a powerful stage soul consciousness uh, i think we can relate to that also just adding a little bit reflection om shan yeah both both eyes physical as well as our third eye so that you know don't miss the awareness who you are you are the soul our true identity uh, eternal identity anyone else would like to share otherwise we can go for hey before we go for meditation i think um rakhi ben uh, told me to yes bharati you want to give your point om shanti om shanti um uh, from the conversations going on i i feel that yes uh i very, i love the definition of being simple and pure as baba said that if you are not angry you do not do not get angry you do not have greed you are egoless then you are simple and when you are simple you are pure so uh it it very closely brings me to my original self and as uh, from the discussions as you were saying that uh, you we have to keep on moving ahead we should not look at the back and we should uh, always think positive and uh, keep on moving ahead so uh, from what my experience is that uh, when we are aware that we have to move on then we uh, deliberately think on about uh, keep on thinking about the past that uh, it things should have been like that like that but we know that uh, we cannot bring the past to the present but still we think uh, keep on thinking about the past and so we make a mistake and after that if we learn also that yes we should live in the present but since it has become our habit then we un- unwillingly we go to the past and make the repeat the same mistakes so at present baba is trying to uh, build, uh, uh, trying, trying to help us to change our sanskars so now we should not deliberately have the greed to bring the past to present and uh, turn the things on as we want but we should be contented and so then only we can give happiness to others om shanti yeah beautiful thank you bharti that's true uh, it, it has become a sanskar looking back so that's it we have to just bring uh, really attention and um, keep moving ahead it will change like baba said today that if you uh, pay attention it will become a new habit will become new habit looking forward and moving forward and being detached based on knowledge and so you would be purely loving yeah nice journey bharti um actually uh, as uh, rakhi ben asked me to announce uh, this particular murli today's murli everybody you can note um you can study it again and bring your more questions there will be further deepening of today's murli through reflection and discussion uh tomorrow for which uh, brother manoj will join and he will take all of us through the discussion and reflection of this murli more deeply so you would not like to miss that opportunity so for that today's murli you read and come up tomorrow with your questions and discussions okay thank you everyone so let's uh, just go for a few minutes of meditation I hope the music doesn't cut my voice. If it does, then let me know. So everyone just continue to sit in that silence, relaxation, and that loving light of Baba showering upon you. We are experiencing our original self the soul the light that shines shines 
with that loving light of the source, God, the Supreme Soul, the ocean of all virtues, ocean of peace. Let the rays of peace, love, power, virtues from the Supreme Soul shower upon you. Where is it showering upon? Your body, body becomes healthy. Every part of the body relaxes. And you simply sit here in the body as your breaths slow down, relaxes. And your mind relaxes. But at this moment, no other thoughts can come closer to you. So feel the shower of that ocean of peace, love and power of your soul. As the soul shines bright, as you feel that peace of your soul, your original sanskar. You see only the soul beyond your physical body. You see the aura of your soul like an angel. All that is radiating out of you is your authentic original and scars and qualities. As you sit here in this consciousness of your real self, you feel all the weaknesses, any negatives and scars. Float away, they fade away from your consciousness. You don't relate to them. The anger, greed, any dependency, attachment, attractions simply dissolve under this continuous shower of the Supreme Soul, my sweet father. At this moment, absorbing his loving light, you experience your original purity. Nothing else but the purity of the soul and what flows out of you is the unconditional love acceptance. Your positive vibrations that fills everyone around you with power. So you see very clearly separate from your physical body your soul, the angel, shines bright. You see the body and your soul separate. This is your original eternal truth, the soul, the angel, and your soul expresses itself through your body, through your role, through all your relationships and interactions. 
also carry this light with you. Let this pure, original, loving light of your soul express itself through your body, through your role, in all your interactions. So carry this experience of that continuous shower of the divine light, love and healing on you. And you the soul radiating that pure love of the soul of your father, the supreme soul through your body, in all your interact. Just sit here, a few more seconds, holding on to that vision, that radiating light of your soul, that eternal view of the soul, pure shining angel. Stay in this experience. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Thank you, Anuban. It was a powerful meditation commentary. Thank yeah, there's you. an announcement for tomorrow, Sunday. That is, we have a same day which Anupen has read the Murli. Is there is a Murli Mantan session by Manoj by tomorrow. So, we shall meet tomorrow at 5 a.m. Till that time. Have a nice day. Om Shanti. Om Shanti.